Senators have been working this weekend on the Hill trying to pass a $95 billion aid package to help Taiwan, Israel, and Ukraine. Failure of the United States Congress, if it occurs, not to support Ukraine is close to criminal neglect. It is outrageous. The Senate will keep working on this bill until the job is done. Well, that bill is expected to get through the Senate, but it is unclear right now if the House of Representatives will follow suit and pass this legislation. For more on this, we want to welcome in this morning Carolyn Glick. She is based in Jerusalem here with us this morning, uh, a former advisor to President uh, or uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and a former IDF defense military captain. Now, you've been talking to lawmakers this week. Obviously, Previous to today, all these bills were bound up between Israeli, Israeli aid, Ukraine, the border. This now seems to be separated out. What does Israel need and what will happen if you don't get it? Well, look, I mean, uh, the United States is a very close ally of, the, of Israel, and um, President Biden asked for $14.3 billion in supplementary military assistance to Israel at the outset of this war, shortly after we were invaded. Um, and uh, it's just sort of been waiting, and, and this is for 2024 and uh, 2025, I believe. So this is all um, just ammunition and resupply because, you know, you use thousands of shells every day when you're at war, and so this is to resupply to ensure that we're going to be able to continue to fight. This war has been victory. going on since the middle of October right. after Israel was attacked right. by Hamas, took prisoners, killed people. It was horrible. There was an outpouring of support for Israel mm -hmm. in the immediate aftermath of that attack. Benjamin Netanyahu says the goal of that war was to wipe out Hamas. Right. It is now February. What is the status of Hamas right now, and how close are we to the end of this war? Well, we've wiped out apparently about three-quarters of their battalions. We have another six to eight that are in Rafah on the southern border that you were talking about with Egypt. And uh, we have to go and we have to attack them. And Netanyahu, in his uh, speech last week, he said, you know, it's like breaking a glass. You break, you break the glass into a bunch of pieces, and then you have to break the pieces because it comes mm -hmm. apart. They start doing guerrilla warfare, and you just have to keep at it. So it's going to take a while. But, but it's not just glass that's there. getting broke here. These, these are human lives we're talking well, the about, the civilians we're talking about are the, as well, are the too, terrorists, in obviously. that analogy. So has that been underestimated by Israel, the world reaction to the civ civilian casualties at all? Look, we have to understand that the civilian to terrorist casualty rate in Gaza is the lowest we've ever experienced in any war. It's, uh, it's I think, two to one. So we're talking about something that the United States was never able to accomplish in Iraq, that no Western country has ever been able to accomplish anywhere, obviously, that Ukraine and Russia can accomplish in their war. So we're talking about the lowest casualty rate, and the outcry is, is a little bit weird. But in the here and now, you may achieve the goal of wiping out Hamas. Right. But given what the impact has been on the civilian population there, don't you run the risk of creating a new generation that will have reason to strike back at Israel in the future? Look, you have 85 percent of Palestinians who are delighted by what they did mm -hmm. on October 7th by those atrocities. And the question is, how do you change the hearts and minds? And what we found is that the slaughter in the single largest day of killing of Jews since the Holocaust on October 7th, and they continue to carry out this crime against humanity by, by keeping our hostages mm. uh, in their hands in Gaza and refusing to release them, that that, was, that gave them hope that they were actually going to accomplish the goal of annihilating the Jewish people in the Jewish state. And the way that you change their view is to make clear that they have no hope of doing that. And that's what the purpose of this war is as well. And it is a correct assertion that there was a ceasefire in place before October 7th. Hamas broke Precisely. it with this attack. What needs to come after the war is prosecuted? Well, first we have to win the war. We actually have to eradicate Hamas as the military organization. But do you need a Marshall Plan for the Gaza? No, I mean you need you, what you need first. Three quarters of buildings are destroyed. First, first of all, what you need is to ensure that they can't attack Israel again. Yeah. We had a one-day Holocaust on October seventh, and we have to make sure that that can never happen again. Fascinating insight, Carolyn Glick. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank We're you so have you back much. Happy soon. Super Bowl. Appreciate it. Yeah.